You're listening to the Transform Your Life from the Inside Out podcast. This episode is actually an interview with a student of mine, and I've titled the interview, The Power of Choice to Change Your Life. And there's a lot in this episode. I mean, a whole lot. We visited for about an hour. And after the visit, I I was thinking, how do I title this episode? And we talk a lot about choice and how choice has transformed her life. And I know that, you know, in other episodes here at the podcast, you've heard other people talk about that I've interviewed and I talk about it, the power of choice. And you may remember that I've said that life is not a choice. Life is choice, meaning choice is literally one of the things your life is all about. Now, we talk about a lot of things. Again, I couldn't even figure out how to title this episode, but our main themes are gratitude, control issues, and choice. And she talks about how when she immersed herself, you know, in gratitude and letting go of her control issues and surrendering and started making the correct choices in her life, how her life transformed. I picked this episode because I know there's something in here for everyone, no matter where you are in life. So give it a listen and enjoy. Hi, I'm Jim Fortin, and you're about to start transforming your life from the inside out with this podcast. I'm widely considered the leader in subconscious transformation, and I've coached super achievers all around the world for over 25 years. Here, you're going to find no rah-rah motivation and no hype because this podcast is a combination of brain science, transformational psychology, and ancient wisdom all rolled into one to take your life to levels you've never thought possible. If you're wanting a lot more in life, to feel better, to heal, to have peace of mind, to feel powerful and alive, and to bring more abundance and prosperity into your life, then this podcast is for you because you're going to start learning how to master your mind and evolve your consciousness. And when you do that, anything you want then becomes possible for you. I'm glad you're here. Okay, so today we're talking with Chelsea, and she's been with me and in my programs for, I guess, what, over a year now? Almost. Okay, so let me do this real quick. I just want to thank you for being with us today, almost a year. And what I want to talk about And who knows where this is going to go. We're just going to visit. Okay. What I want to talk about is you've had an amazing, not you, your life has amazingly transformed in many ways in the past 12 months. I want to talk about what you did, how you did it, where you were, where you are now, and then actually how other people can actually just take what you want to share and apply to their own life. So let's do this. I think you have an amazing story, but let's give everyone a quick backstory of where you were in your life one year ago. Okay, so a year ago, I had checked off every single box that I thought I had to. I had a great business. I had an amazing husband who was funny and charming. I had, you know, the kids. I had uh, the team. I had the nice home. I had everything on paper. And yet I was miserable. If the weather outside was crappy, I felt bad inside. Someone said something rude to me, it ruined my day. And so I realized that I was living life from an external point of view. And that I had no sense of inner peace, really. Because everything that I was doing, it was to chase some sort of external validation or some sort of external reward. And I really just was not in my power. Yeah. So let me recap there is, and I hear that a lot, is that I have so much in my life. I'm lucky. I've got a good partner and a husband and wife or whatever and great kids and I've got a good life, but for some reason, I'm still not happy. What's wrong? Right? That's where you were. Yeah. And so I realized that the missing piece was really all within me. It was all within my mindset. It was in, you know, what I was choosing to focus on and not choosing to focus on. Mm. It was in reliving these old stories um, that no longer served me. And I knew that I was meant for more and there was a potential to be different and be happier and more joyful and bring more into my life. But I, I wasn't doing it. And so I felt like something was missing. Okay. Let's go here because I'm going to take a lot of this apart. You weren't doing it. 
was, I'm guessing you weren't doing it because you didn't know what to do. And if I'm, if I'm off target anywhere, please tell me, no, that doesn't fit or that's not correct. But there's a reason you weren't doing it because a lot of people will say, people listening will say, I know what to do, but I'm not doing it. Did that also apply to you? Yeah. And so I found your podcast. I found it through Manifestation Babe, then James Wedmore, and then I found yours. And you were always talking about this way of being. And it took Mm -hmm. me like six to nine months. I can't (laughs) even while I was like in the program, I'm like being, and I was like, okay, is it this or this? I'm like, no, those are doing actions. And I realized that it was all in my beingness because it doesn't matter what I did. It was how I was doing it. The way I was doing it all comes down to a way of being. And once I really got that in your program, all the dots connected and I was able to really just work through it, grow through it, and then apply what I needed to, to do to, to, you know, be that happy, peaceful, calm, loving, kind person that I always wanted to be. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to come back to this because that's the key as you hear, as you hear me say all the time is well-being is the ultimate state of, mm-hmm. of life. I mean, it's well-being. And guys, I know this is probably you're listening now to the podcast, but as I said that, she started smiling because it resonates with her is that we can have all the external things in the world and the jobs and the home and the money and the relationships and everything. But what, comes, what it comes down to is how happy, how well, how peaceful inner peace and inner, inner balance we have on the inside. Because you've heard me say before, Chelsea, with, without peace of mind, you can't do anything. Now, let's hop ahead. Where are you today? You told us where you were you know, a year ago. Where are you today? Today, I am in a place where I consciously choose happiness first thing every morning, where I consciously um, and subconsciously through what you've taught us in your program, Um, I'm able to be in a place where I really prioritize myself. So I prioritize my self-love. I prioritize my self-care. I fill my cup. And in doing so, I'm able to manifest on a whole new, deeper level. And so today I get in 99% less fights with my husband, less arguments than we ever did. Today I am um, a much more present, calm just more loving, playful mom. Um, Today in my business, I'm the leader that I always wanted to be. Um, And so I'm just in a much better place. I'm in a place of gratitude all the time. Um, I've found through TCP, a tribe of amazing women and friendships. Um, And I'm really just a place where I'm in my power and I'm I'm living life to the fullest. Yeah, I wanna cover some of that. You say that you, and by the way, for everyone listening, we had a little bit of an internet lag there. I'm looking and I have five bars. I did, I did speed test before we started and I'm doing okay. And it's fine. We're going to keep on going. So if we cut out here or there, we'll just do our best to pick up with whatever, you know, was cut out or whatever. When you say, this is a big deal. This is a big deal because we do a week together on choice mm-hmm. uh, and, and our time together. And when you said consciously choose happiness, what does it mean and how do you do it? Well, I literally, because I realized that it was that happiness that I was always chasing. And through your program, I realized that everything comes from within Mm. and that happiness is a choice. And what I learned was the power of responsibility and the power of choice. And I always knew, cause I've always been a doer and I've always been able to achieve success in, in many different areas, personal and professional, but that was always through ways of doing and actions. And when I learned that it was choosing the thoughts and the words, I realized that just how much power that really had because it's, it's you know, and, and it took me so long to figure that out. Yeah so long to figure out the 
the focus of my thoughts and you even <laughs> say this yourself, you say the slightest impression of your thoughts will manifest. And it's so true. And I found mm-hmm. myself manifesting things I didn't want, but when I took the responsibility and reflected on it and said, okay, well, where have my thoughts been? I realized that I had actually created all of that in my life. And so now I'm much more able to create intentionally. Yeah. So what I hear you saying is that you had all these thoughts about external achievement, even though you didn't identify as external achievement. Meaning if I go do all these things, I got to be happy, right? I mean, it just makes sense. If I do these things, I'm going to be happy. And you did the things and you had the things, but you still weren't happy, right? Right. And then you, then you recognized, okay, this is very subtle for everyone listening. It's very subtle and very powerful. Where am I choosing to hold my attention? Because, you know, you're grinning and you know this is that we are where our attention is. And for me, and thank you for giving me the space. We have good dialogue here, a good exchange. Is In the podcast, I get it. I do. Human beings, sometimes it takes us a while to learn. And you're even evidence of that saying, well, why didn't I get it all these, you know, all this time. And when I say you are where your attention is, people listening, wherever they are right now are like, wow, that's really cool. That's a great phrase. I'm going to write that down, blah, blah, blah. And they forget two minutes later. And then they go back, they, they listen and they're all happy and excited. And now this makes sense. And that makes sense. And then they stop listening And then they move their attention to, I cannot believe what my mother did this morning. My husband did this. My kids did that. My boss did this. And then where's their attention? And then what are they creating? Right? A hundred percent. Okay. Okay. Let's go back here also, because this week's podcast that came out was called radical or is called, um, what do they call it? Ratitude, uh, which is, which is radical gratitude. Mm. And that's actually going to be out today's Monday. It's going to be out on Wednesday. But you talk about gratitude and in the podcast, so everyone listening, look for the podcast coming up called Gratitude. but it talks about the power of gratitude. What did you discover for yourself when you started exploring that? Well, when I started exploring gratitude and I always had done it, but when I started implementing it into my day, every mm-hmm. single day, and I wouldn't just choose big things like my kids and my husband and our home, but I started to pay attention to all the little things, you know, like the air and the sun and just mm-hmm. every, every silver lining I could possibly find. I found that as I was more grateful, I was much more easily able to identify. Wait, 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 wait you cut out, you cut out. So you said the air, the sun, and then you cut out. Let's go back. So just the air, the sun, little things, right? Like the light, the seat that I'm sitting on. As I started to tune myself into gratitude about everything, I, I then more things to be grateful about were just always showing up. And I became into mm-hmm. a state of this perpetual gratitude. And I truly think that that just brought even more things to be grateful for into my life. Okay, let's go there. So how do you implement gratitude? Uh, Well, I realized that I had always been this amazing manifester. And then through the tools I learned in TCP, I Mm -hmm. coupled everything I learned from your program And I took it and I actually created a planner and a journal for myself. And so every morning I sit and I write out my gratitude journal and I write through that um, just through my day. Mm -hmm. For the little things as well, right? For all the little things, all the big things. I've learned to even celebrate the little wins in my life, the big wins in my life. And again, that coaxes into me receiving more of that. Okay. That's actually what this week's podcast is about also. So it's, it's, it's synchronicity, which you and I know there are no accidents. It's synchronicity that I'm talking to you and we're talking about this. We'll go some other places here. What does for you, how did you used to show gratitude a year ago versus how you show gratitude now? So I used to show gratitude a year ago only when good things would happen only when the external world was giving me things. I would wait, you know, now I look for things to be grateful for and I Mm. make 
things happen. And I declare that I'm grateful for them. So my mindset just goes there. I have created through TCP, really this bubble of inner peace where everything that penetrates my bubble is only things that serve me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and guys, no gratuitous promotion here, but it's just habit for Chelsea because we've been together for a year now. When she says TCP, what she means is that's an acronym for the Transformational Coaching Program, which is my program that she's been through twi twice now, right? Yeah. Go going on a third time next month, right? Yes. Okay. I, I love your body language when you say yes, because I laugh at like Sandra Chamura, who was, I think she's been around for a couple of years, but I remember she said, why would people go through his program more than once? He must be a crappy coach. And now she's on her fifth round, I believe. And she's like, I get it. Because we, when we grow, we shuck away like peeling layers of the onion and we grow and we grow more and more and more. Okay. Let's and go somewhere. And no, go ahead. Just to add to that, it's so true because when I, before I had enrolled for TCP, I was going through your co uh, podcast religiously and I thought to myself, why would I enroll in his podcast? There's, or why would I enroll in his, in his program? There's so much valuable information in his podcast. If I just listen to these episodes <laughs> a couple of times, I'll learn everything I need to know. Yeah. And yet I was still drawn to enroll in it. And I am so happy I did because every time I do, I, I learn something or I bring something new into my life. So the first round was happiness. Mm -hmm. The second round was inner peace. And my third round is going to be fearlessness and showing up. I've already set that intention. I love it. And I know that's going to happen for you. And, and that you mentioned that and talking to everyone listening every year, twice a year, when we promote TCP, we do get emails saying, and, well, I remember one was very arrogant. She's like, why in the world would I enroll in your program when I have your podcast? And, well, you know, you've, you've explained that. And it's kind of like saying, Bruce Lee is going to teach you martial arts. But why should I learn from Bruce Lee when I can just read a book on, you know, martial arts? It's not the same thing. There's a difference between hearing the podcast and what we talk about and the experience of getting on the bicycle and riding through transformational content. And we talk about experience. Um, a question I have here is how do you, how do you feel when you have gratitude? I, th that sense of inner peace just comes through me. And I, I just, I feel like I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Really, I do. And I feel, and going through the lockdowns and COVID, what I've realized is that, you know, all those extra things that we chase in life, really what is truly the most important, all of us already have it, right? I mean, if we've got a roof on our head, we have the family that we love, we we have food on the table. You know, I, I just, I feel that when I'm in gratitude, I'm able to really tune into what matters. And I just feel a sense of inner peace and an inner, inner, inner love, really. I, I love that where I'm supposed to be is, you know, that I live in a small town in Ar Northern Arizona. And for example, you know, that I renovated my house. I mean, we just gutted the place and it's like, it's never done. There's always something, you know? And this morning as I was getting ready uh, for our time together, the, uh, the screens, the house is 20 years old. We gutted it literally, but all the screens for the windows in the house are being replaced. It's like the last thing we're doing. And they came on Friday and they got half of them, but they didn't get all of them. And the, the, the frustrating part is that we have so many vendors that will come back one time, two times, three times. Oh, we forgot. We've ordered the wrong. It's just a lot of that. And this morning I said, you know, I've got a call today with you and it's gonna be recorded for the podcast. And as what generally happens, somebody's gonna show up and beat on the door three minutes after I start, right? And then I said, whatever happens is exactly what needs to happen. Sigh, breathe, because it doesn't matter. Now that's a, a, a concrete example that I give but is that akin to what you're talking about? Just let, and then if it's not, say so for people, but just let things go. Just be present and everything is okay. 
Yeah. I mean, even just look before we started this interview, I didn't have headphones. A year ago, <laughs> I would have been sweating. I would have been mad at myself. I would have been worried that I had ruined the whole podcast and I've let that go. And we're just going to go ahead and do it and it'll be as it needs to be. So yes, the ability to let things go is something I never used to be able to do. And I have done that through TCP. It mm -hmm. taught me the skills to be able to do that on a profound level. I've even been able to let decades of trauma go. And I know that you don't, this is not like a course for trauma, but I have been able to heal on so many levels because of the supportive community that TCP is and because of the tools that I learned where I now have the tools in place to leave stories behind and move forward in a direction that truly serves who I want to become and where I'm going. That's huge. And let's help some people with that. Even if we're being repetitive again, what does that mean to be, because I'm going to tell you right now, all the people listening to this podcast, you can see this now being on the inside with me that most, and I'm, I'm using a generalization, but I mean it, most people won't let things go. What does that mean to, what did it mean to a year, to a year ago? Let, let, let's see if we can concretize that in some way so that people listening can go, geez, that that's me. And she just gave me a tool. Let's just piddle with that. What does that mean to not be able to let, what's the opposite of that? It's being attached. It's, it's, it's holding on to something that is almost just eating away at you. It's, it's burden on your shoulder that you're carrying that you don't have to carry, you know? And if you would just, if you would just put yourself out there and say what it is you need to say, no matter how scary it is, really it's about being courageous, being vulnerable um, and allowing yourself to shed what it is that you know is holding you back. Yeah, you, you've really, you've really absorbed, we have not talked personally, even though I see you in the group, you've really absorbed a lot of what I teach in the program is that in life, we think about things, we think that, that life is about getting something. The more I get, the more I'm going to have, the better I'm going to be. The more that I develop myself, so to speak, it's a metaphor here, but then the better I'm going to be. And it's not about getting more. It's about, and everyone, I wish you could see the video because she's grinning. It's not about getting it's about ah, letting go of things because it's, it's, just, it's trying to, to be more and have more and do more and get more is what drags us down. Okay, so I'm making notes here as we go. Let's go the opposite direction here. Can you tell us, and whatever you want to share is fine, what you don't want to share is fine too. Can you tell us anything that was really counterproductive that you stopped doing? Yeah, well, I used to be the type of person who would ruminate over the mm. smallest, simplest, <laughs> stupidest little thing. <laughs> this and is, I by, by the way, this is a great choice. And everyone listening, this is not pre-planned, but this is because people listening can go, I'll check the box, that's me keep on going. Yeah, I would just, I ruminate and think about the stupidest little things. And I would let these things ruin my morning or ruin my afternoon or my day even. Stop, um, stop. I'm going to interrupt for a reason. Give me an example of a stupid thing you would ruminate on. A simple thing that somebody said, maybe they said it three years ago and <laughs> I was profoundly offended by it. And I would think about that. Um, it could be something as you know, something like that, where I would just carry it with me. And mm -hmm. I mean, you just alluded to earlier, the power of letting things go. Um, and it, it just, it carries on with so many things when you truly know who you are and love yourself and are grateful for what you have and just are tuned in to where you're going. All these other little things, they kind of hit you, but they don't penetrate that bubble, you know, yeah. and you're able to move forward and then go, Oh, Okay, hold on a second. I got to focus on what serves me because this is a waste of my time. Mm -hmm. I, I, which, by the way, we talk about that exact same phraseology. What serves me? What am I going to let go, et cetera? Let's go somewhere here. Now, you were doing well before TC. I don't know. Were, were you, you were doing well before, before TCP, right? 
on paper, I was doing great, but inner, like inside of me, I knew I was made for more. I knew I had a greater potential. I knew I could be happier. I knew I could be more joyful. I knew I could be more present. Okay, let's let's take this apart. Let's first speak to people because in, in the U.S., you know, I, I talk about all these things. Is that seventy eight percent of Americans live paycheck to paycheck? There were a lot of people listening that there are probably a good percentage that are financially sound and comfortable. And a lot of people listening that they're just not there. They're not, they're not in, in any kind of financial stability or financial resourcefulness. Let's say that you were coaching them through everything you've, you've absorbed with me. What would you tell them to do to get out of, to get out of money problems? Let's use the word money problems. What would you tell them to do to get out of the money problems? I would say that you need to invest in yourself because it's your mind that's keeping you stuck. And it's the limiting beliefs from the stories you've learned from your past um, and from your upbringing or from where it, wherever it is that you are, that narrative that you're holding on to is what's keeping you stuck. Um, and I know that you did this uh, workshop or you did some sort of a call where you talked about work being separate from money. And I grew up thinking yeah. that they were one and the same. I grew up thinking that the harder I worked, the more money I would have. But from going through your program, I have worked very little this last year and made the same, if not more money than I ever have. Um, and I truly think that it's just the way I frame money now. It's, you know, I, I contribute to the universe in different ways, not necessarily through hard work, but from my belief system, I'm able to just draw money in. And I, for anyone who doesn't get this, I'm sorry. If you join Jim's program, you will mm. get it, but it just starts to flow. It, it really does. Okay. Let me segue from the podcast for just one minute. The fact that you're here listening to my podcast means that you're serious about transforming your life from the inside out. Now, that being said, you're going to want to mark your calendar because I'm doing a live no charge training starting on March the 4th. It's a three part transformational training and it's called the Be Do Have series. And what we're going to do is we're going to dig deeper into the ways of identity that you need to be so that you can actually change the things you need to change so that you can have the health and the wealth and the success and the money and all the things that you want. So whatever you do, mark your calendar for March the 4th, 3 p.m. Central Standard Time and visit jimforton.com slash be do have. And again, whatever you do right now, get registered for this no charge training. Okay, back to the episode. I'm thinking of where to go with that. And I love that. And when she says for anybody that joins Jim's program, I'm sorry, because she and I talked prior to us talking to all of you. And I said, we're not gratuitously promoting the program. I want people to listen to us talking and say, that's me. That's me. That's me. I can relate. I can relate. Okay. Let's go somewhere else here. A good percentage of people listening are in relationships how have you changed in your relationship from a year ago to today? And how has the ways that you've changed affected your, your relationship and your partner? Definitely the biggest thing um, that has changed is, is relationships, my relationship with myself, my relationship with mm. my partner. And it all comes from me used to being the type of person that would react to things. And so we would get into these arguments over little things that had no meaning. You know, at the end of the three days and our argument was over, I'd forgot what we were even arguing about. Hang on. And I'm guy for people listening, I'm interrupting because I want to take this apart for you guys. We would get into arguments over the littlest things. Was that you being a nitpicker back then or trying to control? It was, I think, me trying to control. And it was, a lot of it was stemming from my attitude. Instead of, it was a bit of both. It was controlling. It was not being able to let things go. Mm. And if my partner would respond in a way that I didn't like or would let <laughs> me the wrong way, then I'd take it to the next level. And then he'd take it to the next level. And now I'm able to step back, respond, 
instead of react. And I think that's probably one of the biggest things I, I've learned is my ability and the power and the choice I have to respond instead of react. Which we cover a week on that also as you know, response versus reaction. How do you respond now? You had said that you stop, you take a step back. Is that correct? Do you just metaphorically take a deep breath? What do you say to yourself when you're about to respond as opposed to reacting? I really just, <laughs> things just don't even, they don't even get to that point. Got it's it. like something said to me and I'm just like, ah, it's all right. Like <sighs> I, I, just, I don't even get to that level where I have to take a deep breath. It's, it's more so that it's just now become a part of me. Um, I don't take things as, as I used to. I've learned to let things go. I've learned to just to pick my battles and, and choose them wisely. And yeah, it's a really powerful thing, but it's kind of just turned into my way of being. Okay. How has this affected him, your change? What have you seen in him as a result of, now she's grinning everyone, for those of you not watching video, how has that affected your change? How has it affected his change or his way? Yeah, you know, it's so funny because just last week, I I haven't had a, a bad day or anything like that in a really long time. I used to sure. have them every, every two, three weeks. Now I almost never have them. But the other day, I was just going through some things and he's like, ah, oh, do you need to turn gym on right now? <laughs> right? Um, but in terms of how it's changed him, he's a lot happier and he's like, life is just easier. Everything just flows with more ease because now instead of dwelling on little things that don't matter, we're living in more joy. We're living in more happiness. We're living in more ease. And things have just, when you're happy and joyful and grateful for what you have, life is better. And so I would say life is better for both of us. We get along more, we laugh more. It's just, yeah, ripple effects all around. Okay, so let me ask, um, where do you live? I live in Winnipeg, Canada. So right in the center okay. of Canada. That's all we need, just you live in Winnipeg, Canada, okay. Um, do you live in Neverland? <laughs> I know life is so good. I wake up every morning and I'm like, oh, my life is so good. It, you know, look at the sun is shining. And I, I would say that I do. Okay. Well, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm giving you that metaphor is you live somewhere on the planet, right? And there are people all around you and still in the news and, and your prime minister and this and that and social media. You're in a world that pretty much everyone else is in right? Mm -hmm. Notice all the people, and we're not going to dig on the topic of COVID, but look at all the people that have been affected by COVID in extraordinarily, let's say there's no, there's, they've not had anyone around them be sick or any of that, but their, their mental attitude has been completely tarnished because of not having social contact or whatever they choose. How would you coach that person listening right now who's let their life be dictated and controlled by all of that? Yeah, and I, I used to be that person, so I get where they're coming from. Um, one thing that you always say is to be in this world and not of this world. And I've really mm -hmm. truly tried to embody that. And just like I do with my relationships, um, even with materials in my life, I really choose to only bring into my environment that which serves me. And so I get the information I need to know, and then I shut the rest of it off. And I'm really just, you know, I'm focused, right, on where I want to be, on what I want to think. And I consume myself with positivity and with inspiration and with things that I can do in ways I can be instead of focusing on the things I can't control. Because when we focus on the things we can't control, that just spirals the wrong way. And it just brings us in a place where we're in a low vibrational state. And okay. that anyone. Yeah, I want to create a distinction here is that people listening, some people could say, oh, she's Miss Ra Ra motivational Susie, Susie happy, you know, and, and I want to point out that what we're talking about is not external or even, even self motivation. It's not that this is we're not having a pep talk. It's that you've shifted mm -hmm. how you experience the world. Yes, 100%. Okay. So you've shifted from a place of being externally driven, yeah. meaning the world around you is going to determine how you feel to being internally driven. I choose how I feel. Yes. Right. So I want to point out, this is not, and please, your, your, your positioning on this, 
is you don't have to get up every day and rah, rah, motivate yourself and listen to Zig Ziglar and all these kind of things. You don't have to do that every day. Is that correct? That's right. And I mean, at one point I did, at one point it helped me, but after I was able to really, you know, because it's all about repetition, right? It's, it's reprogramming that subconscious that you teach us how to do. Mm -hmm. And then all of that then just becomes so much easier until it just becomes your state. Um, and so, no, I don't need to listen to a hundred different, you know, positive affirmations every single morning. I say my own, I make my own yeah. choices. Sure. Um, you know, I, I block certain things out. I bring certain things in and it all just comes together. And yeah, I mean, I, I've been in a country and in a city where our province, our lockdowns have been pretty restricting for, for several months. And um, this last year has really just been so many things have been shut down or the way of life is so different. And I can truly honestly say that I have never been happier than I was in the last year. I love that. And that's a choice, whether what's going on in the external world or not, it's still a choice, right? Yeah. And let me point out here, there are people listening, I know, that are going to say, well, you don't understand because you don't have kids or you don't understand because you're married or this or that. You do have kids, right? I have three kids. I have oh, three, three years. I've got a two-year-old or sorry, he's three now. I got a three-year-old, a four-year-old and a six-year-old. So I get it. I totally get it. But again, it comes back to taking responsibility for how we choose to think, what we choose to do, how we choose to spend our time, who we choose to surround ourselves with. It all comes down to that. And I feel like, and I mean, I still got some work to do, but we all do I've learned. I've learned so much how to make these tools work for me and how to just elevate me. Yeah, there's something, and you are correct. There's something you said there that even though we've touched upon it, I want to dig on, dig into it some more because you've nailed it hundred percent is I think you just used the word choose three times. You said something like it all comes down to how I choose the blank and how I choose the blank and how I choose the blank. Even if we've already talked about this, let's see if we can drill down further. How do you choose? How do, let, let's see if we can take it apart for people, meaning you live your life. How do you choose one thing over another? How do you choose what's, how do you know what's gonna, as you wrote down here, your exact words were serve me. How do you, how do you know to choose these things? I think one thing is just sitting down and being honest with myself and knowing what I want. And, and, you know, a lot of people I think don't get what they want in life because they don't actually decide or aren't honest with themselves about what they want. And then it just becomes a matter of consciously doing it. And at first I, you know, I made several mistakes along the way. I veered off path several times, but when the TCP community is there, you jump in on the group, you talk to them about what's holding you back that day and they help bring you back into focus. And you realize that everything is a choice. Every breath is a choice. You know, every thought is a choice. And I think that that's just become so ingrained that now I don't even have to think about it because it's just come second nature. Mm, okay. Let's go somewhere there. Um, the word community is, you, you know, you've mentioned a few times, we have a really strong community. And as you know, the community, it's unlike anywhere else. And when I built this program, I never, ever, ever had any thought, idea, speculation. It would ever turn into what it's turned into. In your mind, what's the importance of community in our mental health and the way we live our lives? A supportive, loving, strong community, I think is everything. I mean, as amazing as your coaching is and as your coaches is, coaches are, the community that TCP is, is what brought my transformation to the level that it is. Because mm. in that community, we trust, we support, we love, we, you know, we encourage each other, but we're also able to learn from each other what one person's going through. So are so many other people. Um, and it really just creates this bridge from where we are to where we want to be. And there's so many people around to, to help us get there and who are with us along the way. So the TCB community is, is everything. And it's a community where it's so hard to find because I went in there and I 
I, I can't even tell you this, you know, a year ago, two years ago, I prayed for the people that I have in my life now. I pray for them. And through TCP, I've found them. TCP yeah. in other ways, but a lot of them have come through TCP. And um, it's everybody who's wanting to just grow and develop and, and live a better life. And we're able to do that together. And so I think community is very strong. Yeah, and I wanna point out, thank you. I wanna point out to everyone listening, the community is not rah, rah, rah. I believe in you, girl, you can do it. Go, with you. It's, it's not that. It's, let me go somewhere here. Let me think about how I want to say this. Somebody that's now a coach used to be in other people's programs. Uh, not like, not transformational programs because not a lot of people do what I do. And after she went through her very first TCP, she goes, I'm in a year long membership over here at this other place and I don't want to go back because there are so many people over there that are trying to build a business that are victimized. They're, 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 they're victims and they make bad choices and they complain and they whine and they moan and they groan. Let me ask you, as you've transformed your life and, and changed the way that you be, and we use the phrase be do have, what have you noticed about the majority of the world around us and how people show up? Well, I used to be them. I used to be that person. I used to be victim. You know, I used to be in victimhood. I used to complain. I used stop to- there. Stop, stop real quick. But did you ever recognize you were a victim? No, because misery loves company, right? Yeah. And so when I was at my lowest state, I looked for people to be in their lowest state with me. You know, I looked to bring people down. Oh, look what happened to me. Oh, I'm so sorry. This sucks. Doesn't it suck? <laughs> you know what I mean? And it was just this never ending loop. Um, and one of the things I love about you, your style of coaching and TCP is that we don't support each other at our lowest states, no. right? We give people the choice and the responsibility to figure out for themselves how they can bring themselves up. Um, and that's what you need because you're not always gonna be there to hold our hand. We have to be able to, to create that from within. Um, so yeah, that has been a huge part of my journey. Thank you for that. And we do, a, as you know, a week on environment. And I really wanna go back here because so many people, the masses are paralyzed by fear and the mass hysteria around COVID, mm -hmm. okay? Let's not even touch upon what it is, what it's not. You know, we have a progressive community with the community at TCP and we're, all I'm gonna say is this, is that the masses are looking for a vaccination as opposed to thinking, how strong can I make my immune system? How healthy can I be? Let me keep drinking my 12 pack of beer a day and smoking, but I gotta have that vaccination when it comes out right? So when it comes to achievement in life, I, I want to talk to you because you're, you're financially successful. When it comes to building a business or financial strength or financial stability, in your opinion, how, how important is community in doing that? Well, community is everything because, you know, the people that I have on my team and on my my staff, I mean, they're all community. They show up because of each other. They show up um, because of the people that they get to serve. And so community is just, everybody is intermingled, right? And so even with my team, I try to focus less on being the boss I used to be. I used to be all about get your work in, get this done, let's hit these targets. And now I'm more so in a state of, how are you guys doing? Like, do we need to take, you know, whatever time to kind of talk about how you guys are doing. Do we need to go into, you know, a, a mental health day? Do you guys need a, a meditation or something? So I'm more concerned with their mental state and how they are coping through the lockdowns and through everything going on. Um, but we lean on each other and, you know, we support each other and we help each other. And I think my community has, has done a really good job at being there for each other. Yeah, let's go to, okay, because um, you, they'll relate to this. So we can say, thank you for that. We can say that you are by social standards, a successful woman, right? Yeah, I mean, you're, you, you have all the external things, plus yeah. now you have what you call the internal things. So you've got a good life. Okay. Yeah. Lots of women follow me and listen to the podcast. Now we have a lot of women that are working two jobs and three jobs and they're in horrible relationships. Uh, 
and they stay in horrible relationships um, out of fear of and for security, which security is an illusion, as you know. I mean, if you want to get you know abused, but you get security for that, well, what are you really getting? But let's go here. If you were doing a women's event and you were, and, and fellows, this is going to apply to you too, okay? Because it applies to all of us. If you were speaking at a women's event, female event, Women's Entrepreneur Association of Canada, and you had to tell people how to go from a life that's not serving you well and you're struggling to a life of prosperity and abundance, even though you might've already covered this, let's synopsize that for everyone listening. What would you tell us? Well, first I would Take say- Take time if you need. Okay. First I would say, get clear on what it is you want. And then anything that isn't that, and that doesn't contribute to that, detach yourself from it. Let it go. Hang on. And please remember your train of thought. Okay. I know what I want. I want a hundred thousand dollar a year job, but I married and my husband is a horrible husband who never shows up and there's no support. And I have no, no like romantic life at home. And all I do is take care of the kids. Let's dig deeper. Let's dig real. How would we answer that? Okay. So your husband is at home. He's horrible. You're too busy taking care of the kids. Um, to break it down fully, I would say, okay, well, what can you do? Like, is there, is there any way that you can look at what options or opportunities are there? There are a bunch of multi-level marketing opportunities where women are working from home. Um, there are podcasts with so much information on how you can learn to change your situation, right? There's Jim's podcast. There's a bunch of podcasts on just so I would say get as much knowledge as you can figure out what it is you want. Um, look at the opportunities available to you and anybody that tends to pull you down, I would say break away from that, you know, and if you find yourself getting into a rut where you yourself are spiraling down, I would say try to release that by journaling it out or calling someone who is going to lift you up. Um, do what you can to get out of that frame and always come back to where do I want to be. Okay, let's go one more step. So I'm gonna, we're gonna role play. Is my husband, um, I, I need to leave that environment, okay? And my husband, I'm afraid to leave. Where do we go then? I would say if you really wanna leave your husband and you're afraid to leave now, you know, look at where your life is going to be a year from now or five years from now. Look at how much time will have gone by and you're gonna be stuck in the exact same place. So I would probably go there um, because we can, I can tell people what I think they should do and I can give all the advice in the world, but until right. they truly want it for themselves, yeah, not going to jump ship. Until they want it for themselves is the key. Until right? they want it for themselves and they're able to pull the trigger and make that change. Yeah. And that being said, let me ask you this, because I know you've been in some not so, so great places in your life. Yeah. 99.9999999910 times out of 100, when you make that scary choice, do you die? Does the world come to an end? You never die. <laughs> you never <laughs> die, at least. And you and I both know, we've listened, if people have listened to your podcast, they're only as life, right? right. Um, but yeah, you, you, don't, you don't die. And everything that you want is on the other side of that fear. You know, when I came to terms with my trauma and faced it head on, or when I said, I'm stuck, I'm sick of being in the state of mind. And I was afraid to, to click that button, to, to jump into your course. I left, I said goodbye to those old ways. I said goodbye to those old stories and I committed myself to only the future. And I think that's what people need to do is they just need to say enough is enough. I'm ready to move forward and they just need to do it. And there is always a way. And I think when you declare what it is that you want, I think that the universe puts things into place and gives you doors. And as long as you can trust that and trust yourself, it always works out. Yeah, I have a client of mine I've talked about on the podcast very, very little, but he went from zero, his company now, now does about a hundred million a year in five years. And I've known him for a long time. He even asked me before he started the business he's in, what should I do? 
And we had not talked for about a year back around, I don't know, 2013 or thereabouts. And I've coached him after that, years after that, in his entire uh, C-suite. And I said, you went from broke last year to millionaire, millionaire status this year. What happened? Now, everyone listening, this can apply to anything in your life, whether it be your health, your wellness, your money, your relationships, whatever. He didn't hesitate. And he said, and it's very, very simple that most people miss, but it's very profound. He goes, I decided to become financially secure. Notice that, how simple. I decided, the operative word is decided. I decided to become financially secure. And that backs up what you're saying. Know what you want. And you know what? Just put one foot in front of the other. The world is not going to come to an end. No matter who you are, you leave your husband, you leave your wife, whatever. The world is not coming to an end. Okay. I'm going to give you the stage. Let's say that, we're, which we want to do, we wanted to do for a year and a half now, a live global TCP event, because you know the amount of students we have, and we become family, like community, for real, people that are of like mind, which most of us, I would say, are air quotes, spiritual and orientation, uh, very progressive thinkers, not only politically progressive thinkers, but just open human beings. So we want to have a, uh, an event. And let's say I put you on stage in front of, because we're in Sedona, so it's a small town so we can only probably hold 500 at an event you only you got 500 people on stage and it's your audience what's the message that you wanted to, to deliver to them to give them a better life take your time i hit you with that you don't know what it's going to ask so <laughs> i would really just say like i look at myself and i look at you know how i grew up low income, very little direction, very little, you know, I don't want to get back into my victimhood or whatever. Um, but I would say if I can be, do and have anything that I want, and I have, and I've proven that to myself time after time again, in the last year, I've cultivated that inner peace and that inner happiness, then so can anybody else. Anybody can be, do and have anything. Okay, and simple. We don't have to, I spoke at a real estate event many years ago and there were top producers there. And uh, one of my friends was co-hosting. He was a, at that time, a, a very large national real estate coach. And he called somebody on stage and the guy was like the top producer, I mean, mega producer in the Western United States in Southern California. And he says, how do you become a top producer? And he handed him the microphone and the guy said, that's easy. I go to work, I do what I need to do, and I go home. And that was it. I mean, everybody's expecting this like massive, oh, here's how I did it. And he literally just says, I go to work, I do what I need to do, and I go home. Okay, let's give them one more takeaway. What do you think of everything you learned in TCP and our time together? And we want it to be tangible to everyone listening, and I'm sure it will be. If you could only have one tool to transform your life and our time together, one phrase, one concept, one tool, I'm slowing, slowing down, giving you time to ponder. You only get one. What tool would that be that if you had to gift it to someone else and you say, execute on this tool, it will change your life. What is that one tool? It's so easy because it's, it's what we've been talking about this whole time and it's just choice, right? Mm, and everybody yeah. knows they have a choice, but do they really get that everything they do, think, say, everybody they surround themselves with, everything they would enter their life, do they know that they're making a choice? Because you are. And if I could give people that awareness, that would change everything for anybody. Thank you so much. And in the podcast, that's why I say there's a podcast titled and it's so simple that a lot of us miss it. It's titled, it, the title is not life is a choice. The title is life is choice. And you think about that, everything in your life is choice. And you can, what people will do is look for, you know, ways around that. But you look at Viktor Frankl, who wrote The Meaning of Life, and he was a Nazi uh, war prisoner back in the 40s in Germany. And he wrote The Meaning of Life. And basically the whole gist is, 
is everything can physically be taken away from you. But what cannot be taken away from you is your power to think as you choose. And for all of us, no matter your circumstance, because you know in TCP, we see people from 20 different countries, literally all walks of life, from poverty like me. I grew up on a farm, for crying out loud, a real farm. You grew up not having a lot of money. You see the whole gamut of people doing that to people that have you know very successful families and everything. But I think what we all get is that where we are in life, all of us, is not a matter of the external world, it's a matter of our internal world from the inside. You know, we work from the inside out. That is a choice. So anything else you want to finish up with today or are we good? Yeah, no, I just, I'm, I'm going back to when you said you had that guy on the real estate stage and how he said, I just do what I got to do and, I, and then I leave. And it's so true. If we, we all know what we need to do and if we would just let you know, that, that ex, those extra distractions and the extra BS that we let into our life um, take up so much and consume so much of our time, then I think there's just so much that we can do and overcome or achieve um, and bring into our lives if we would just stay focused. And through TCP, it really helps you understand how to focus in on where you want to be. And that's one of the greatest gifts that I learned. So I am super mm. grateful that I got to be here today. And I thank you for inviting me to this to the podcast. Thank you on behalf of myself and everyone listening. Um, again, I know that we all, you know, I can say things and some people get it, some don't. And I know my own life, somebody can say something and I'm like, oh, okay. And then somebody says the same thing in a very different way. And I'm like, boom, oh, wow, I really get it. So I think we touched on a lot of things that people listening even if they can't, you know, they don't air quote, get it from me. Hopefully what you said they get and they'll start implementing and executing in their lives. Chelsea, thank you so, so much for being here today. And I'll see you soon. Thanks, Jim. Thanks for all you do. Okay. Thank you. Thank you everyone listening. Thank you for listening to this entire podcast. If you're the kind of person who likes to help others, then share this with your friends and family. You know, if you found value, they will too. So please share via your social media channels. Also, if you have questions, I'm here to assist. You can email me questions to support at jimforton.com and I may even use your question for a future podcast episode. Also, if you want transformational content like this daily, connect with me on Instagram. My Instagram name is I am Jim Fortin. Finally, I do have a personal request. I believe that we're all here to help others and to grow and evolve ourselves. Together, you and I, let's help more people. If you would, please leave a review on iTunes, and a good one, by the way. <laughs> I'd be grateful, and through your assistance together, we can transform more lives. Thanks for listening.